listen, we're going to be talking about uh, Star Trek Prodigy today because I finally watched the show. After all of you guys telling me you need to watch Prodigy and me going, I don't want to watch the cartoons. I watched it. And uh, something interesting happened. I finished watching it and this article came out at the same time. Uh, now, so which led me to, to talk about the fact that there is a good and a bad with cartoons. Now, you guys have heard me say that, well, it's a cartoon, so it's not really canon, right? Mm -hmm. um, because you can do things you can't do. Now, this is what I want to say about Prodigy. Prodigy may very well, outside of Star Trek Picard Season 3, actually, no, include that, actually, for a second. Star Trek Prodigy may be the most Star Trek thing that Paramount has made. Really? New Trek. It may be the most Star Trek thing. It may have the most Star Trek hopeful ideals heart that we look for when we watch Star Trek. Wow. And it's made for small children. Wow, big ups. So kudos because they really managed to grab onto that. And I, listen, I want my kids, if they're going to watch Star Trek, which, by the way, they didn't hold on to this show. No, they did not. But I do. we, we do want to introduce kids to a hopeful type of thing. And But the secret to Prodigy success, in my opinion, the secret is Captain Janeway. Right. And listen, Captain Janeway, if you guys don't realize it, Captain Janeway, probably of all the Star Trek shows, Voyager is the most locked into the ideals of Starfleet of any other show that we've watched. Right. Voyager is about maintaining Starfleet's ideals. Right. In this, in the face of extreme adversity with no actual requirement to maintain those ideals. And you can embody that ideal in the acting, in the character of Captain Janeway. Mm -hmm. And it just oozes all over Prodigy. It's like, it's like sliding right back into Voyager right. when you're watching this. It really feels like that. You feel like you're getting Captain Catherine Janeway. And I got to tell you, I loved it, man. I just loved it. Um, there's part of the cartoony stuff and some of the kids stuff that I didn't like, but the storytelling was good. The, uh, the, the, you got some Star Trek really cool, like alien worlds and like a bunch of different things, mm -hmm. uh, which was really great. But, but there is a mistake. There is a problem. And this is why when you're talking about canon and cartoons uh, and Star Trek cartoons that you, you end up with a problem. And there's this article by inverse that came out a few days ago. And now that the season one is fully ended for, um, for prodigy. It was really weird the way they did it. Like we got, uh, 20 episodes, right. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is considered one season over the course of a couple of years, a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. It was really kind of weirdly, weirdly it was done. weird. It was like, Oh, oh, here's three episodes. Here's another. Three yeah. So it's eight months later. Then here's 10 episodes. And that's and like six months later after that I was doing with another three. Like what, what are you doing? I don't understand. Right. Right. Um, so anyways, here's the, here's the article. It says Star Trek's riskiest finale of 2022 messed with Star Trek, Star Trek, can starship cannon and got away with it. Uh oh, okay. So this is the thing with cartoons. Okay. Uh, they had a massive, if you guys haven't seen a little bit of spoiler warning here, if you haven't seen the finale of, of prodigy, we're going to talk not in detail, but a couple elements. Okay. Uh, in the in the explosive two part season one finale of Star Trek Prodigy, a murderous AI hijacks a massive fleet of Starfleet ships and turns them against each other. Although Prodigy is mostly aimed at kids, its season finale turned out to be bigger and bolder than many finales of other contemporary Star Trek shows. But just how many starships were destroyed? And will Prodigy season two feature yet another new starship? Uh, these are the questions that had to be answered. I'm sorry. And this is what they asked them. This that is very is, interesting. That is almost exactly like the last episode of Lower Decks. Okay. Okay. So this is really important that we talk about this because now listen, they've told us cartoons are canon, right? Right. Okay. So here's the problem. Because this new Prodigy season one is brought up to about the year 2384, the show's timeline is just a few years ahead of Lower Decks season three. And right on the cusp of the earliest flashbacks of Picard season one. So 2385, that's the flashbacks. Mm -hmm. This is happening 
past tense Picard season one. Okay. About 14 years or so. Hmm. Okay. Um, so the post nemesis years after 2379, they're like jam packed with events from three different shows. Okay. But the people the the, the Hagman brothers who are in charge of prodigy have, um, they, they, they tell inverse that established continuity didn't impact the huge fleet battle at the end of supernova part two. They said, I don't think we really had an issue there. I don't think we had to check with anyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we considered all the starships there as just a big Easter egg. Why the defiant and the enterprise E were involved in this battle. Ooh, rough. Now the fact that he said, I don't think we had to check with anyone tells you just the biggest thing. Yeah. Someone, someone tell Terry that they're using the enterprise E please. Well, I mean, that's the point right is smack is dab I, in the middle of his cannon. Well, the fact, well, and his story takes place well after this 17 years or so after this event. Right. Right. But we, okay. We know. Okay. Hey, go ahead. The enterprise E shouldn't be involved. In, okay, go ahead. Okay, so, yeah, the point is, is that they didn't, we, I don't think we had to check with anyone. So they didn't feel like, they don't feel like it's important that they check with Canon because they're making cartoons. You need to check with people when making Star Trek. Right. It's really important. So who's captaining these iconic ships at this point? And then Kevin Hagman says, what? Stop. Well, we can't answer that. We can't. Um, right. what the Hagmans want fans to remember is that prodigy is designed as an introduction to Trek for new fans. So while this fleet is littered with Easter eggs, cracking those eggs open, isn't the point. If you have a giant fleet battle, basically the size of like Wolf three, five, nine, right. With major starships involved at a time in history that this would be something very memorable. Like this ending of prodigy season one was a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Tons of starships were destroyed. Okay. So that's something that is going to, you know, that, that puts us a, uh, a mark on Canon on the yeah, calendar. What about the whole synthetic thing and all that? Because you know, like, there's a, so much, I mean, here's the deal. If, if it doesn't matter, then why don't you throw the millennium Falcon in there too? Why not? <laughs> well, you know what? But, but the point is, throw the a point is, Galactica cruiser. Why not? Who cares? I mean, the, the point is, is that they don't, they're not, listen, as great of a job as they're doing of, of really bringing the heart of, of Starfleet and Star Trek to Prodigy, to young kids and to people watching it. It is great. It was great. They, they, they are not paying attention to what impact they have on the big, the big picture. Right. And going forward, they're going forward. These this is going to keep making seasons. These characters, these these characters are going to become, it seems like, important elements to Starfleet. Important characters. I mean, they're going on a ship with Vice Admiral Janeway, right? Hmm. I believe they're going to go look for Chakotay. So um, this is this is coming, and this is that that takes us into a lane where a lot of us Star Trek fans who aren't necessarily cartoon fans are like, whoa, 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 whoa. now we're talking canonically about things we want to know something about. Yeah. yeah. You know, we want to know what happened to Chakotay because uh, we got this whole seven of nine problem still. People that didn't, that don't really care about animated stuff still cared about what happened to one of their favorite characters. And I do too. I mean, me too. Like I care. We heard nothing about Chicote at the F since the end of Voyager. We've mm -hmm. gotten seven of nine. We've gotten Janeway. No Chicote. So um, we've we've even, oh I almost said something. Oh I almost made a mistake. I almost gave you guys Picard season three news. Almost gave it with something away, yeah, and I didn't you do almost it. Almost did, buddy. Caught myself. But it has something to do with Voyager. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I I actually like heard you coming into that. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I almost messed that up. I don't know if you're like, and you're gonna get that. to see, and I'm like, oh shit, I gotta stop. Okay. Um, but so guys, so let me just say for all of you guys said I needed to watch Prodigy, you were 100 right. I really I felt I fell in love. I love I love Voyager because it to me it's the heart of Star Trek. That show, you know, I believe in sacrifice and loyalty, and those are part of my core. 
ideals and it lines up with Janeway's ideals. And so getting to hear her voice and, and her leadership uh, going into the show, knowing there's going to be more is just a wonderful thing for me. So I'm glad that I did it. Thank you guys for pushing me. Wow. Shane rarely says that. Usually it's like, oh, yeah, I watched it, man. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen. Um, yeah. So at the end of uh, lower decks two, there was this whole AI thing. And even though I enjoyed it, I thought, it's not making any sense. But you know what? One of the people in the chat here, Archmage Frey, just said something that makes me enjoy Lower Decks more. And this is how I'm going to perceive Lower Decks in my head canon. Lower Decks is canon only in that's a television show within Star Trek, not real events. I like that. All right. Fair enough. All right. So Lower Decks is a television show inside of Star Trek. Oh, great. It's a good way to look at it. Uh, that's about to get ruined yeah, in Strange New World. It's going to get yeah, ruined okay. in, in three months, right? <laughs> not only, not only, not only are we getting time travel, but lower. Decks. But we're getting crossover with a cartoon. I don't know. Str strange New World season two is, is on thin ice. Strange. <laughs> on thin ice. Let us know in the comment section below what you think.